The game of golf has a long and rich history throughout the Washington metropolitan area. Part of that history is certainly the quality of amateur golfers who have hailed from the area. Of those golfers, there's little question that one of the best ever is Columbia Country Club's Martin R. West III. Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon. And I'm Tony Kornheiser. And we are here to pay tribute to our friend, Marty West. The golfer, right? This is about golf, right? Not Marty being in a finance business. We're not here for stock tips. What are you, nuts? Of course, this is about golf. Marty West was the greatest golfer at Columbia. He's one of the greatest golfers in Washington, D.C. He's one of the greatest amateurs of all time. This is not about stock tips. It's about golf. When Marty was at the University of North Carolina, he was ACC champ. He beat Lanny Watkins. He was on Walker Cup teams. He played in the Masters, the Masters, Tony. Played in the U.S. Open. Played the U.S. Seniors Open. His resume is incredible. Okay, I'm just saying I heard he picked stocks. Stop with the stocks. You can walk in the most famous golf courses in this country. Pine Valley, Seminole, Country Club at Brookline. Marty's name on the wall and his picture's up there, too. I hope it's not that picture that he used to promote this dinner, the one where he looks like Lee Trevino. What was that? <laughs> it's such an honor for bad golfers like us to know Marty, to play with Marty. Such a privilege. I played with him. It was thrilling. Have you ever even played with Marty? Yeah, I know it's great, unless you talk. Marty doesn't have conversation. It's like playing with the Sphinx. Greatest round I ever saw was Marty at Pine Valley. He birdied 18 to shoot even. Now, he's been under par there many times. But on this round, Peter Hicks and I were yapping at each other the entire round like magpies. And if you think I'm loud, you can hear Hicks from the moon. It was impossible for Marty to concentrate. He would have happily killed us, but he kept grinding. He birdied 18. You know, Marty won the club championship when he was 67 years old. The main draw, not the seniors, against guys 30 and 40 years younger. Aren't you and Marty about the same age? Not about the same age. We are the same age. We were born on the exact same day, and we have talked about this. I told Marty he's got all the golf genes, he's got all the hair genes, and he told me I've got all the stick genes. That's what? his way of saying shtick, stick. Stick, he says. It's so great when Martin R. West III tries to talk Yiddish. Lachaya, Marty, to life. Marty's record of accomplishments is legendary, and his impact on the game immense. While golf was always a part of Marty's life as his grandfather, father, and uncles were all avid players who loved the game, contrary to what one might think, Marty was not drawn to golf at an early age. He tried swimming and tennis before making his way to the first tee. Once he did, he demonstrated a knack and a love for the game and a competitive spirit that still guides him today. His first victory came in 1965 when he won the Junior Club Championship at Columbia. In high school at Landon, he was named to the All-IAC team. Yet according to Marty, he didn't come into his own until he got to Chapel Hill and was playing for the University of North Carolina. He gets better in the heat of competition. Not a trait that I inherited. Um, my hands turn to stone, but he elevates uh, whenever, whenever he needs to, and he has a, uh, a quiet strength in that way. In 1970 at Carolina, Marty was named Honorable Mention All-American. In 1971, Marty won the ACC Individual Championship, beating a field that included Lanny Watkins and Jim Simons. Following that year, Marty was again named All-American, and his name was listed right below Tom Watson on the roster of great college golfers. When Marty's getting ready for a golf tournament, I can tell Marty's getting ready for a golf tournament. He's highly competitive. I think Marty is fiercely competitive. As I look out on the front putting green here at Columbia early in the morning when I arrive to work, and he's pitting a few putts. The next evening, walk up to the driving range between 6 and 7 o'clock, and he's hitting a few shots. I think Marty is a complex person. And then he plays a few holes late one night. Did I mention fiercely competitive? Saturday and Sunday, he might play with some of his friends and play an 18-hole round, and you know that there's a Monday tournament. Marty's always been a student of the game and had the opportunity to learn from two of the best at his home club, Hall of Famers Fred McLeod and Bill Coach Strasbaugh. When Marty finished at Carolina and finished competing in the first of two Walker Cups, many thought he would turn pro. However, as Marty put it, that was not the life that he wanted to lead. 
He and Betsy are an incredible team. They're a remarkable couple. The two of them together add up to more than their individual parts. They could conquer anything that life was going to throw at them, you could tell. Growing up, we always knew that our family was his top priority. We knew that he had given up the opportunity to pursue a career of professional golf because he didn't want to be on the road 40 weeks of the year and away from the family that he was planning. And we felt valued as a result of that. We often probably get used to the fact that he's such an excellent golfer. And that piece of him was always fun to talk about and it was always fun to watch, but it was never the most important part of who he was. And, you know, even my kids love the fact that grandpa is a great golfer and loves the fact that every once in a while, you know, you can read an article about him or you can hear about him um, on the radio, but they just love their granddad. My dad often says that the reason that he was able to play golf so much, and yet Marty and I never felt like we had lost our dad to the golf course, was because my mom was so unbelievably present and available in our family. Despite my dad placing a priority on being there for us, he did spend a good bit of time on the golf course. And so my mom, she devoted all of her energy, her organization, her conscientiousness to making my brother and me feel supported and really made it possible for all of us to have the family that we had. He pursued a career, built a family, and got engaged in the community. He also continued to compete and in many ways dominated the local amateur golf scene. Marty's qualified for 38 USGA championships, 19 US amateurs, 10 US senior amateurs, four US mid amateurs, two men's state team championships, two US senior opens, and one US open making the cut in 1976. He's a two-time winning Walker Cup team member and was a member of the winning 1972 US World Amateur Team. One of our assistants was watching a Ryder Cup. We had a TV in the pro shop and the Ryder Cup was on. And as Marty came through the locker room on his way out to the first tee, the assistant asked, hey, Mr. West, have you ever played in any of these big team competitions? And just at that time, Hal Sutton was hitting a shot in the Ryder Cup and Marty pointed at the TV. He said, yeah, last time I did, he was my partner. He's a four-time participant in the Masters, making the cut in 1973. He also competed in the PGA Tour's Kemper Open six times, making the cut in 1986. I don't think it's so much about winning. Marty hates to lose. They say that good players spend a lifetime seeking a perfect swing. They say the great players perfect the one that they have. And I think he's done that in all facets of his life. Marty's a nine-time Maryland State men's amateur champion, second most in history, winning his first title in 1973 and the most recent in 1997. He's a three-time men's Maryland Open champion, a five-time low amateur at the Maryland Open, a two-time Maryland men's senior champion, and a 12-time state team champion. He's also a five-time Mid-Atlantic champion, a seven-time runner-up, and a two-time Mid-Atlantic senior champion. He's a two-time Washington Metropolitan Amateur Champion and won the 2012 WMGA Men's Senior Championship. Marty's one of two people who has won all four of the major championships in the area, the Maryland Open, the Maryland Amateur, the Mid-Atlantic Amateur, and the Washington Metropolitan Amateur. He was elected to the Mid-Atlantic Golf Association Hall of Fame in 2000 and was just announced as a member of the inaugural class of the Maryland Golf Hall of Fame. He served as president of the Middle Atlantic Golf Association and also served on the USGA Mid-Amateur Committee. Marty also gave back to Columbia Country Club. He's the fourth member of his family to have served as president of Columbia Country Club. His grandfather, father, and uncle preceded him in service starting back in 1938. Marty has consistently volunteered and still does to this day for any committee or working group where he can be of assistance. There's no question that Columbia Country Club and Marty West are synonymous with one another and his contributions over the past 50 years have made Columbia a better place. While competing at the highest levels of amateur golf, he's also managed to win 16 club championships in five different decades between 1970 and 2015. He also is an 11-time men's senior champion and may be the only person to have won the men's club championship and the men's senior club championship in the same year back in 2015. I think Marty's uh, biggest impact here at Columbia Country Club is his willingness to share. 
He gives very generously of his time. He plays golf with anyone. That's kind of nice. As great as his accomplishments on the golf course have been, Marty's true priorities have always been off the course. Marty's lived in Rockville for 48 years with his wife, Betsy. They have two sons and five grandchildren. Marty's been a member of Fourth Presbyterian Church for most of his life. Today, Marty's an elder at Fourth Presbyterian Church and continues to provide his leadership, enabling the church and its parish to flourish. Marty's built a fantastic career in mortgage banking and real estate development. In his next chapter, Marty pivoted to financial advisory services and built an impressive career for many years. Marty is a legend in every sense of the word. He's had a very strong sense of priorities in life, and it's been family, church, and golf, and in that order often. A lot of us tend to lead different lives. At, at church, we're one thing, and elsewhere, we're something else. But Marty's consistent, just like his drives down the fairway. Uh, the man has a great short game in life and in golf. He's consistently faithful to the word as best he can. He is not a perfect man but he is steady and reliable, whether it be in his business or in his family or with his friendships. Uh, he is there when it counts, and his short game, his meaningful game, his intentional game in relationships and in life is what sets him apart. I can remember we were playing in the Cascades Invitational, which is a lot of the best amateurs around the, the area playing, and Marty and I had uh, gotten ourselves off to maybe a five or six shot lead in the tournament with four holes to go, and the 15th hole was a long par three and 215 yards, and I hit it right next to the hole for a gimme birdie. And on 16 was a par five over the lake. <clears throat> Marty said, go for it. And I fortunately hit a three wood over the lake for a gimme eagle. So I had made a two and a three. Well, 17 is also a par five. And I wasn't in the hole like Marty was. Marty crushed a drive, hit a three wood on the green, and he knocked it in for eagle. And on 18, long par three, 185 yards, elevated tee, Marty throws it in stiff and he makes it two on the last hole. So we go two, three, three, two. We give each other a high five and Marty turns to me and he said, whatever you can do, I can do better. That's perfect. That's, That's perfect. Great. That's really good. <laughs> I can promise you that'll be it. That's right. <laughs>